so I've been putting this video off for a pretty long time. Initially, I was going to do the standard camera lens YouTube comparison thing. You know, a bunch of pictures of inanimate objects with a bunch of pixel peeping to once and for all determine which combination will be the best at dynamic range, sharpness, bokeh, you know, all the other things that barely matter when taking a photo. However, it dawned on me that I've owned either some variation of an X100 series body and or the Sony Zeiss 35mm 2.8 lens for about eight years or so. And therefore, I should do the comparison a little bit more justice. Funny enough, the thing that actually took the longest time with this video was figuring out how to access eight years of archival digital files in a way that was easy to parse through the XF, you know, finding the camera lens combinations to pull examples up to compare here. So here we are, you know, a long time later after you guys requested it. And these are my honest thoughts on the Fuji X100 series versus the Sony A7C and a 35mm f2.8 lens. So let's start with what might be the most boring to some of you, uh, but this is pretty exciting to me. You know how I like to talk about my ergonomics. It's no secret that the Fujifilm X100 series is famous for its retro, compact design. Thanks to its fixed 23mm f2 lens paired with an APS-C sensor, giving us the 35mm full-frame equivalent field of view. At this point, the X100 camera body is a classic. With this metal construction, it offers a confident density without being too heavy like other brass-made bodies I won't mention. All the physical dials, reminiscent of an old film body, are present, with a satisfying click to them that begs to be fiddled with. The camera is simply a joy to get your hands on after you get used to the change in mindset from your typical cameras. You can, of course, configure the settings to use the front and back dials for setting things like shutter speed, ISO, you know, similar to a DSLR, but that would be a waste in my opinion. And even though I always kit mine up with accessories to help with the handling due to having big hand syndrome, the X100 is a compact marvel. Not quite as pocketable as a Ricoh GR, but absolutely small enough to be an easy, everyday, everywhere carry. In addition to the retro dials, the X100 famously has a hybrid optical and electronic viewfinder that is reminiscent of a rangefinder camera. For me personally, this is my favorite part of the X100 series. As someone who embraced mirrorless cameras at an early stage, the break from the digital screens can be a welcome change of pace. I love being able to shoot with the optical finder and then pull up an image preview later to be blown away with how what I saw with my eyes was interpreted by the sensor and the camera's processing. Though this is more of a benefit for personal shooting versus professional critical work, the surprise is kind of taken away when using an electronic viewfinder, since we will see the image as it will be captured before we even hit the shutter button. This translation from the OVF to the digital file is made that much sweeter by the flexibility and out-of-box color science that the Fujifilm simulation system offers. For this reason, I exclusively use the OVF. The X100 series is also known for its leaf shutter and ND filters that are built into the lens. The shutter is basically silent and allows for fast flash sync speeds. And the built-in ND filter is something I wish all cameras had. So convenient in a pinch. One downside I do have to mention, on my X100F, I keep the back LCD switched off. And the camera's smart enough to still use it when hitting the playback button. However, it will not use the back LCD for menus. Instead, it will switch from OVF to EVF and force you to bring the camera to your eyes to change the setting. I absolutely hate this. Interestingly enough, the X-Pro1 does not do this. It knows to always use the back screen for menus and playback unless you bring the viewfinder to your eye. I'm not sure why Fuji regressed on this. Moving on to the A7C, this is one of Sony's best looking camera bodies, in my opinion. Yet, it's nowhere near as attractive as the X100. Still, I have to give credit where credit is due. I love the attempt that Sony made here with their first full frame rangefinder styled body. 
it's actually very impressive that they're able to fit a full frame sensor and their full size battery into something so compact. However, the size is a double edged sword of compromises. First, with my monster sized hands, there's absolutely no way I could use this camera without accessories. I've actually struggled through several different variations of handling aids and I'm still not 100% happy with it. Out of the box, my pinky has nowhere to go and the lens mount is entirely too close to the grip. Even with the compact lens selection I have, it's easy for me to rub my knuckles in the focusing ring of my lenses. This would be way worse if I actually owned a G Master lens. Sony could have remedied this by making the body slightly bigger, longer even, or offsetting the lens mount further away from the grip, or changing the shape of the grip altogether, making it slightly bigger and pointing it away from the lens mount to give the fingers more wrapping surface, similar to the hand grips from Fuji X Pro bodies. The handling is my biggest complaint of this camera, though I think I've said on the setup that is at least good enough. Unlike the X100, the A7C only has an electronic viewfinder, and it is also the center of many complaints for this camera. I will admit, it's pretty small to look through. If you can get your eye into the viewfinder, it's fine in my opinion. But if you wear glasses or simply cannot press your eye into the finder, it could be a problem for you. It's definitely among the weaker viewfinders I've used, but it's perfectly serviceable for my use. The back LCD on the A7C is an articulating swivel screen. For photography, the only benefit I really find with a screen like this is that I can fold it completely away for protection in the bag and to eliminate distractions while shooting. I'm a back LCD off type of shooter, so I enjoy this. You can of course use it to frame shots in weird angles. Uh, which can come in handy, but it's it's my least favorite way to frame a shot, personally. As for the rest of the camera, the top plate is made out of metal, and the rest of the body is plastic. It certainly doesn't feel as solid as the X100. The only dedicated dial it has is exposure compensation, leaving the shutter speed control exclusively on a camera dial. A lot of Sony lenses do not have an aperture ring, though a good amount do now, so you may have to control the aperture using camera dials as well. This is also a problem because Sony opted to exclude a front dial, leaving only a back dial and a jog dial around the D-pad. I generally like to have all three components of the exposure triangle available physically without having to reference a screen to see the settings. So this is a bit of a drawback to, compared to the X100 in my opinion. For the lens, the Sony Zeiss 35 mm is very compact, though not quite a pancake. It's light and it includes a very convenient protective lens hood. The Rokinon or Samyang 35mm 2.8 is a good alternative here that is slightly smaller and lighter and much cheaper, though you do give up some autofocus performance in my opinion. To sum it up, the X100 series design is classic. And if you are someone who enjoys physical tactile controls and an optical viewfinder experience, it simply cannot be beat in a digital camera outside of Leica. By comparison, the A7C body is impressively compact, but suffers from some key ergonomic issues, corner cutting for the button layout and EVF that make it a little bit less enjoyable to use. The overall speed and operation of a camera has become less and less of a concern for me. Lately, I've been shooting with cameras that are 10 years old or older even, so I'm generally pretty patient when shooting right now. Of course, I tend to also use the right tool for the job. So when I shoot sports, I use a faster camera versus shooting something at a much slower pace. So with that being said, I think there is a noticeable difference between these two. However, it's not something I would base a decision on. Both tools are fine as long as they fit your shooting style. Nonetheless, depending on which X100 you get, the overall speed of the body may vary. The original X100 was pretty slow to operate. Navigating menus, waiting for photos to write to the card, and autofocusing were a chore. Of course, this improved with every generation, and the X100B is the best of the series in that regard. But for me, the X100F is a great sweet spot all the way around that can be had for less than half the price of an X100B right now, if you can even find an X100B to buy. 
I think I paid about $525 for my X100F with a Garris half case and a Lensmate thumb rest and one of those square uh, lens hoods and a few batteries. A pretty good deal in my opinion. The X100F should have similar AF performance to an X-T3, which is more than enough for most things. I don't use continuous focus with this camera because I'm usually in a slower frame of mind when using it, but I can say that the single point AF is pretty solid, even in lower light. Give it a little contrast to focus on and it will lock in. That being said, the A7C is simply on another level. Navigating menus is fast, writing photos is quick, even in burst, and the autofocus performance is good enough to shoot sports with. It's essentially the same setup as the Sony a7 III with some minor improvements, and I definitely use that camera for a lot of sports. The continuous tracking and IAF on this camera still feels like a cheat code. It's so easy to nail, almost every time. There's not really much else to be said. The A7C is a better performer than the X100 series when it comes to general camera navigation, autofocus speed, and writing performance. Framers quality. Let's keep this short and sweet. The colors in the Fuji are better. Big surprise. The Zeiss 35mm is sharper than the Fuji 23mm at every aperture and every distance. The sensor in the A7C is better when it comes to dynamic range and high ISO performance. From an overall technical image quality standpoint, the Sony is just plain better. However, does it really matter? I don't think so. The X100 takes fantastic pictures. The way I would describe the comparison is that the Sony produces cleaner, sharper images across the range, while the X100 provides better colors and a bit more personality. It's not as critical as the Sony, it's a little dirty, and this is completely subjective as to what you prefer. If you like the vibe and the soul that the Fuji seems to enhance, then great. The Sony can be made to emulate that in post, but if you're doing that type of editing on every single photo, then there's a chance you might have an easier time with an X100. It might be able to get you closer to your end goal quicker. This was a very long-winded way of saying that it's super subjective, and hopefully the photo examples I provided give you the idea of what you can accomplish with your stylistic goals with either one of these cameras. Both of these cameras are very flexible in their own ways. The X100 is the ultimate bring everywhere camera body, which affords it a wide variety of subjects simply because you have it on you. Landscape, cityscape, portrait, street photography, documentary, event, family photography, the list goes on. It can almost do it all, and that is thanks to the fact that it's just so easy to sling and bring. Some of you may not appreciate this, but you know I have to mind the drip. It's a good looking camera. It almost looks like an accessory to your outfit, which makes it a little more fitting to always have it on you. For example, it looks way more at home slung across your body at a grocery store than a full frame DSLR. It's cool and casual, a conversation starter that can also fade into the background. It never looks out of place, and therefore, you in return feel more comfortable always having it. This is what makes it flexible. The A7C, by comparison, is almost as much of a companion, but it's not quite as sleek looking or as compact. This can make it just outside the bounds of comfortable for an everyday carry, but this will of course be subjective to us all. I think with a tiny lens like this 35mm 2.8, it's compact enough that you can always have it on you. The real key to its flexibility is the fact that you aren't stuck with one lens or two conversion lens options as you are with the X100. You can keep it small and compact for everyday carry and then switch to a 7200, a 100 to 400, 200 to 600 and get some sports or wildlife shots using the same body. Swap on an 85 or 135 for amazing portraits or attach an ultra wide zoom lens for real estate interior shots. Furthermore, unlike the X100, it actually takes high quality video and can be rigged up for a proper prosumer video setup. In short, the interchangeable lens mount and jam-packed features make this camera ultra-flexible. 
It can be your one and only camera for street, sports, landscape, wedding, video work, etc., etc. While the X100 is versatile because you are most likely to have it on you, the A7C is just straight up versatile. It really is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now here comes the important question, which would I get? Notice I didn't say which you should get because I can't make that decision for you. For me, it would depend on where I saw myself heading in the future. If I'm only going to buy one camera and one lens and video isn't important, X100. It's fun, a joy to handle, and it's a great photographic companion. However, if I feel like I will expand into other focal lengths and or shoot video in the future, I would want a platform I can build on, A7C. It could start out as my halfway to an X100 body with a small 35 millimeter lens, and then grow into the focal point for all types of situations and use cases. Very simple, of course, they both take amazing pictures, so the choice is fully up to you.